So um, there is. A, I don't know if we should turn off this or just the front line. Let's see. What? <laughs> we need three people to turn off. <laughs> well. So well, anyway, while they, they turn it off, I will. Uh, I'm Horacio Canales. Uh, my talk is Python in Metadata Manufacturing uh, with the case of industrial robotics. Um, I, uh, I work for the CPT, for the University of Barcelona, but CPT is our uh, research group. Uh, we mainly work on a technology that is called thermal spray, but uh, especially in cold spray is what I, uh, what I will show you, show you now. But, uh, well, in general, uh, I, I just want to make a, a little introduction about the technology that we're talking about. Some applications uh, where Python is being used for, for research in additive manufacturing here in Barcelona. And uh, then we'll go straight to Python for industrial robotics. And at the, if we still have some time, I would like to make a demo so you, you can make some experiments at home or, or just play a little bit if you want. So uh, let's go. Yeah. Uh, what is our research about here in Barcelona? Uh, we work with uh, powder materials, uh, uh, metals, uh, super alloys, different kind of materials. And uh, well, we do uh, as well uh, manuf uh, additive manufacturing. I would like to put you just a video from General Electric. That I think that they made a good, a good job just to say what is this technology about and, and what it used it for. So, well, as you see, uh, we spray powder material. Uh, well, um, to build uh, parts of jet engines that use materials, uh, b very special materials uh, that have high resistance. Um, yes, at high temperatures and well, very aggressive environments. Uh, and as you see, well, the, the main idea is that we spray uh, powder, and this powder uh, behaves as, as a kind of well, it kind of melts when it gets on the substrate. Well, it doesn't. It's not like that, but it's the easy way to say. And well, it's it's used to to build parts of, of this kind of engines that you use when you fly uh, in the airplanes. And well, there are many. Uh, now it's a very active topic in research uh, in the world, Europe, and I think in the world in the world. So I will show you how uh, here in Barcelona we use uh, we use py you use Python on this research. Uh, well, that is mainly it, is to make this kind of machines and repair them as well. Uh, so uh, the problem with this technology is that it's a, a, a complicated technology. What I mean with that, uh, if I want to make experiments in order to know if I uh, make a, a change a parameter like pressure, temperature on this machine, uh, it could take me a lot, lot of experiments in, or in order to, to to get a good result. Uh, so here is an example of, of just to, to see uh, how big I is the possibilities uh, when you're changing parameters. So uh, here are 400,000 different combinations. And just few of them uh, have a good result of 100% deposition efficiency of powder. So when you, uh, depending on the process parameters, that is very important to, to choose the right pressure, temperature, and, 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 and all well, speed and, and, and many of these parameters, it, you could get a good material or a bad material. For example, if you didn't choose those ones, you can have a, a, a here is a, a, some delamination. It, def it deforms when it's not uh, well deposited, or you can have a lot of erosion because it's very high velocity and it just erodes. But on the other side, if you choose a, a, a good uh, a set of parameters, you can grow a very thick uh, material and very fast. So that is very good for, 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 the, for the industry. And when, but usually when you fly or go in your car, well, you just get the, ma the good material working. But behind that, there's a lot of research. That is what we do in, in our institute. Uh, so, what is numerical simulation? It's one of the things that, uh, that we do. And I, I just want, before going into cold spray, because I want to talk what, what we do, I just wanted to put a, a little example of, uh, of a code uh, of numerical simulation of heat diffusion. So what we do in heat diffusion, just, just to say is that, uh, to make an example, just you put some uh, temperature in the center for some time, and then you let diffuse that heat. Uh, that is done uh, solving uh, um, 
this uh, equation that is a uh, La Laplacian um, operator, and then, well, you solve it with code. So uh, if you can see, uh, it's, it's just normal Python using NumPy, CPy, and matplotlib for, for, for this kind of plots. And well, it's a class with some methods, just as you do in many, many cases, but uh, well, yes, here we can predict how the, how, how the heat will uh, diffuse on, on, a mater on a material. So, uh, for every manufacturing process, it has a, a, a some a, a physical phenomena. So, if, uh, in our special case that is called spray, um, the physics that are related uh, to, to, to this uh, technology is uh, is a rocket nozzle, just like the rockets uh, that fly to cosmos. Uh, we use the same technology, uh, but we do we use this. Um, <laughs> these nozzles, that is this one, uh, we will see it, in order to transfer heat and momentum to, to particles. So here is just a, a, a good example of, of, of how the machine works. We put it on a robot. It, wor it works also with the parts on the, re on the robot, but uh, here we uh, put uh, precious uh, gas on high pressure, like uh, between 2 and 8 uh, megapascals. We heat it, then it goes through the nozzle, and it accelerates because and also it, it transforms the thermal energy to kinetic energy. So once uh, the, the gas is, uh, is stabilized, we inject uh, particles, and these particles uh, go out and accelerate uh, until they hit a substrate, as you can see. So we are constantly putting all, in all, all these particles uh, in order to form a bulk material uh, here on the surface <coughs> of, of, of the substrate. So, uh, once, uh, this is the way that the, the particles go inside, that go very, very fast. Uh, they can go up to uh, 1,200 uh, meters per second. Just imagine a kilometer, Im imagine that you can pass that kilometer in one second. So it's that fast. Uh, thanks to that, we, we can uh, build materials uh, on top, and well, this is the, the machine. So in order to make simulation, we need to understand all, all, the, all the physics related to this work. And thus, uh, I <laughs> And that is our supplier. <laughs> uh, uh, for, uh, f in order to, to simulate the, the velocity and impact temperature of, of, of these particles, well, <coughs> there's also Python code in, uh, uh, on the back solving these equations that you can see on, on the left. So on one side, you just solve, uh, this is a, 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 well, a dra drag, uh, <laughs> drag force you calculate on the momentum transfer, the convection heat transfer, and well, fluid dynamics and all that is behind all this uh, fluid dynamics. So, um, uh, well, yeah, simulation uh, helps us uh, to, to, to get that information. Why this information is important? It's important because uh, the simulation uh, brings the information that we hardly can get from sensors. Because uh, as it's too, too fast, I can measure maybe the velocity. But the temperature is, uh, well, at this with the technology, uh, state-of-the-art technology, we can, can, can do it. But we can simulate this heat transfer. And well, that analysis uh, brought by uh, <coughs> Python will help us to, to see all this data. So for example, I, I just uh, put out an example of, of what we do. We have a, a, a nozzle, the, the one that I showed in the, in the last slide, uh, get all the data of simulation data. And uh, using pandas, matplotlib, and seaborn, we, we can start visualizing how uh, some pressure, temperature, distance uh, gives me uh, the, ve the velocity and temperature of, of the particles of different sizes. Because uh, every time that I choose a new uh, powder material, this powder material have a, a, a distribution of size distribution, and we need to know uh, how I affect this. Um, this velocity and temperature. Well, maybe you have seen this in other areas, but well, I have to identify how well, we use seaborne for that in order to see the quartiles and the media and try to choose what is the effect on all material properties at the very end. Uh, also, uh, <coughs> also, Python uh, help us. Uh, this is um, with pandas, uh, we discretize that continuous data in order to uh, see all the possible configurations of the equipment. For example, uh, we have different nozzle designs. We have uh, different powder materials, pressures, temperatures, distances, uh, particle sizes. And on this side, we can see how we can select different configurations and how that will affect 
and the particle velocities uh, and particle impact that also help us in order uh, to get the right um, process parameters in order to get a good part that c you can use. Uh, so the ones we have uh, all this data because you, c you can, well, it depends how much simulation you want to make, but you can get uh, millions of points. And um, you can get, uh, go to the microscope, that's what we do, uh, see the powder and then analyze uh, w which particles are, are, are being bonding, which ones are uh, be er eroding the material. And for example, this is a, an example of a logistic regression. So a very simple classification model applied with C C scikit-learn. Um, so it helps us in the world distri particle distribution, which particles are, are being bonded and which ones are being um, uh, well, bounced off of, of the spraying operation. So here in the red, you see they are predicted not to go inside and they're ones to go inside and that helps us um, to get more knowledge about the process, you yeah, at the very end uh, met predictions of how can I get a better deposition efficiency or a better uh, material property. And once again, well, uh, behind that, it's a lot of Python code. Uh, yes, making the plots and making the, um, the classification and, and all this. Uh, also, CycleLearn uh, was used at, at the beginning uh, to build up an uh, experimental, how, how to say, um, an iterative experimentation process that we used in order to reduce, for example, porosity of, of our depositions. This is a, a stainless steel uh, material that is, uh, well, it was sprayed with cold spray, but at the beginning we start some experiment like this. At the very end, we get a very dense and, and good material. And well, that started with CycleLearn, but then uh, we decided to make a platform online. Uh, but well, now that is deployed on Node.js, but because, well, <laughs> because of that. <laughs> it works well with the internet. Uh, yes, I know, but uh, the, the real motivation uh, was CycleLearn because it was, it's very easy to, to make a regression or poly polynomial features. Everything is very, very, um, but well documented, uh, documented and yeah, <laughs> documented. <laughs> um, also, uh, well, we use uh, deep neural uh, deep neural networks uh, with TensorFlow and, and Keras in order um, to recognize uh, material properties just from from a picture of a material. So, as you can see, uh, this is um, we grind materials and we have a uh, well training data and all that is behind of data generation in order to predict what will be at, at the beginning, what will be the material, and then we have some uh, regression tasks that uh, uh, tell us how to make a, uh, know, know the hardness, uh, know the tensile strength, and well, it was a pretty good application. We're still developing more, more and more, uh, but well, it, it won a Microsoft Research Award uh, this year. Um, yes, of our AI application. Um, so, well, now let's move to industrial robotics a little bit. Uh, what we do uh, here mm -hmm. in Barcelona related to industrial robotics. When, when we use we use the uh, cold spray technology, uh, what we got is this kind of, of uh, well conical shapes or prismas, however you want to, to call them. Uh, they never get a, a straight walls. They are always like this. So uh, that means that uh, that we need to play with the robot with the gun in so, in such a way that we can fill this side and try to get a, a straight wall. Uh, it's, it's something like uh, what, what you do for, uh, uh, you know, 3D printing, but the difference is that 3D printing, you can build uh, these uh, straight walls. Here, you can't. So robotics and, and especially Python help a lot uh, in order to get that. Uh, here are uh, uh, some videos of control of, of these, uh, uh, these operations. Uh, uh, you can see it's rotating and making and filling the sides that are needed in order to build this kind of uh, of walls, and all the code behind that is uh, what is Python. So uh, at the very end, I will try to make a demo. So because maybe you see like this and say, well, on how? But we will see, we'll see how how it helps. How, how is it to make it? Uh, this is um, it was a it's, a it's a great development because uh, well we with this we can start uh, building parts from zero. It takes very, 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 f uh, it's very fast. Six minutes is nothing for, for, for these materials. Uh, actual, well, you know how, how much it, well, 
There are other, other metal additive man, uh, manufacturing technologies that takes hours, uh, many hours uh, to build something like this. We can make uh, channels, we can make thin walls. So, well, it's part of the work, and as I told you, Python is, is behind all these developments. So, Python for industrial robotics, <laughs> now to the point. Um, to the best of my knowledge, I, I will say, because uh, sometimes there are good libraries that are not very well uh, advertised, <laughs> or, or, well, they, they, they are not, it's not easy to find them. I know three sol solutions. The first one is Robodeca. Uh, they, they have a simulation environment and offline, uh, well, and they let you offline, uh, make offline programming of industrial robots. Uh, it's commercial, but uh, the Python app is open, open source, and that is very interesting because um, they also have post processors that are open source, and well, that makes a big difference. Uh, well, in my case, because you can already use it for, for other kind of work. Uh, the most popular, of course, uh, well, is ROS, the robot operative system. And they have the branch that is called Ross Industrial. It's an open so, uh, source project, but most of the work, uh, there are a lot of Python, but it's more popular on C++ users. Uh, but still a lot of, of things made uh, with Python. And this one, that I, I, I never worked with this one, uh, with visual components, but I, I saw that they, they are, uh, also have a, a Python API for the simulation environments. Uh, well, I cannot say a lot of that because never, never used this one. Yeah, well, this one, the most that I use, and this one I use for experimental things like, ah, I don't like it. <laughs> but, well, because, uh, and in this case, the robot is simpler, and you will see how, how, how it works. So, uh, the first question, when, when, when I was about to, 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 to program a robot, uh, was what, what I need to know. I mean, yes, I know Python, but I need some uh, specific knowledge about how, how to use it. And, and my answer, I don't know if everyone will, will agree, but I think with that we, ha we need to understand the industrial robot pose. So a pose is a representation of the robot tool position and ori orientation. What it means that uh, this is the tool o of the robot. So we have a tool center point and, and, and this frame that you see, well, these coordinates, they bring a, a position and an orientation to this point. Uh, and we can build uh, different ones uh, in all the simulation domain. So to, uh, here is something that is important, that we, we, it's easy to represent a position. You just need to X, Y, and C uh, points on the, on the space. But uh, orientation can be represented in many forms, and it depends on the robot manufacturer. So ABB do it one, on one way, Motoman in another way, and they choose, and they, you get confused at the very end. So it's what I, wa I was saying in the abstract of, of this talk, that when you want to, to work with many different brands, so usually you have to know a lot of uh, programming language, and, and not just that, but the ecosystem behind that, and it becomes very tricky. Uh, we will see in Robodeca how how they did it uh, to make it uh, more easier. So, uh, the position uh, is, uh, is how we say it. We have a point, S, Y, and C, and you can also always put uh, other points re uh, ref referred to that point. So, uh, you can see this one is, is referred, frame two is referred with frame one, yes? And a very uh, common way of uh, describing orientation are the uh, Euler angles. So they just are three numbers that describe uh, the rotation around one axis. So uh, let's say that um, if you fly in an airplane, if you want to get the uh, southeast, something like that, so you may, uh, the plane just do it at the same time, everything. So you rotate in, in uh, like, what are you? One second. Uh, if you want to rotate on the y-axis, you do it this way. If you want to rotate on the c-axis, you do it this way. And well, x on this way. So at the very end, the combination of them, they will give you this smooth uh, like orientation that you need. And that's the way that you tell to the robot, put on this place uh, with this orientation. So let's make a demo. Let's see if it doesn't fail. <laughs> and um, so I will use robot the can. So you, you can see how it's how it done. Uh, let's try to reproduce and, and, and make this example better. This is from the Robodeca uh, web page. They give a, a, a little example, yes. So 
So first, um, you may need to uh, download it. It's for free. You can download. They have some limitations uh, when it's not commercial. Uh, we have a uh, educational uh, license because we are the university. But look here, uh, uh, where is the world? This thing, you can uh, download the many different robot uh, models. Uh, let's uh, choose any of them, uh, or maybe not. But the one that we have in the lab is the 24/6, for example. So. We download it uh, and put it there. And as you see, it, it has a reference that is the zero zero on the simulation uh, domain. And from the bottom, we can choose a, a tool that will be attached. I, I will just use a pencil uh, and it put it on the tool head. Yes. So. Uh huh. I'll put this, and I already have a, an environment <laughs> that I don't know what I have installed there, but uh, what I want to that doesn't go up. Hmm. What is thinking? Ah, there is. <laughs> well, uh, you see, it's installed this robot can and well, all, all the things that are behind it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first thing that, that we need uh, now that we have is, is to, to, to make some reference points uh, that are called targets. Uh, this is a target, as you can see. It has a position and an orientation. So now it put it o o on the tip of, of the tool. We can put it uh, a little bit uh, more down. Well, that's too much. Let me put it to 1,000 maybe. Uh, well, yes, that's OK. Uh, and rename it uh, to use it. Huh. So uh, we can uh, open. Well, I use code for for, for, for editing programs. It's slower than usual. I think it's a little bit. Uh, I was trying what to do for the demo. <laughs> At the end, I decided uh, well to make the most simple. Uh, well, um, we'll put it like demo we dot pi, right? So from Robo the car is just import the um, the library. I will import everything. I know that it's not very, it's not very efficient, but Robotica, by the way, um, <coughs> it's it helps you a lot to work with the special. I mean, it's a, a open source library that helps you to work with the special uh, operations like uh, uh, Euler angles to quaternions, rotate on C, rotate on Y. Uh, it, it's for that. And Robolink is just the link uh, between Python and um, and Robotica. <laughs> And RoboDK interface, yes. So from from RoboLink, um, we we will just create an instance of that. Um, RoboLink like this. So well, I'm pretty much uh, just following the this example, yes, that you can see it. And we will. I want to make some some changes at the very end. So you 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 will see that you can manipulate whatever you want. So the first thing is to have a robot, yes. Uh, I'm I'm okay on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because if not, I can put something down. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> as, as, you, as you. No, I, I I like it. I like it. <laughs> You're on time. Somewhere. Yes. Um, so the the first thing is that uh, from from RoboLink we need to get an element from 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 the RoboDK interface. So here uh, I just I have to put the item that is my robot. Um, ABB. Uh, IRB uh, 2400 slash 16. So it's 16 kilograms that it can hold. Um, I can get as well my um, the home. Yes, I, I, I made a home. So I can just say home. It's igual, the same. It's igual. Um, just get the home. Yes. 
So um, uh, now that I have the robot uh, uh, and, uh, and where I have, uh, I want to go, I can just uh, the robot now as an item has uh, some uh, some method um, that you can use to in order to control the robot. So you can say robot um, move uh, linear. There, there are different kinds of movements. You can make a linear that will be a straight line between two points. You can make a move joint that will find the the quickest path between two points, and the move C that will, ma will make a, a circle, uh, well, a round movement between these two points. So here I, I will just say move uh, L. Oh, well, it's what I told you, yeah. <laughs> and you, you say where to go, but you need a pose, because I get the item, but I, know, I don't know the pose. So you will say just home and uh, dot pose. That is a method that returns the pose of, of that specific um, Item. So let me just put the robot a little bit far away from from, from the home and and run the the script. How it was the moi yeah. So as you see, just move uh, to to that point as well. Here, the orientation is is a little bit strange. Sometimes you have to change it. Here maybe I don't know if it's this way. Well, uh, n now it's a little bit more more higher. I, I can change uh, the joints. We had say six joints, and here may I think the fourth or the fifth is is is, is not on the side, on the right. Yeah, something like that doesn't matter. Well, it matters because it it it, 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 can, it can make a, a big problem. So, uh, if you look at the uh, 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 this documentation, at uh, this example, they, they tell us how to make it uh, make a, a, a go around an hexagon. So let, let me just uh, reproduce this example, and then we'll make it go into a circle, and then make a, a more things from there. So the code is, is, is pretty simple. It's for i in range seven. It says yeah. um, you get the angle on. Uh, Depending on radians, if, 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 if I'm not wrong with that. Uh, good thing that Pi already comes with uh, RoboDK, so, well, I don't have to write it. I don't know if it's in Python as well, Pi. No, I, I don't think so. P is the number? Yes. Simple in math. In math, yes. Ah. Math? Yeah, but I, I saw the, uh, the how, how they put it, and it comes with Robo, RoboDK. Ah, so yeah. Uh, no, 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 but I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Um, so they ask us to rotate the pose. Uh, here is where we'll, we'll create a new pose. We can start from, for example, home, use the pose. Uh, as you see the method, then uh, well, they, they make this uh, rotation. They, they make the rotation of this pose on C. And I angle um, a, trans a translation of the point. Uh, well, I put a little bit less, and they rotate it once again because sometimes the joint you have to put it on the right place. So it put it in order. So this is the the order that they recommend. So minus angle. And finally, well, they make the robot um, make a linear movement, uh, move L to the new pose. Yes. So let's see if it if it works. I don't know. <laughs> so it it, it makes the uh, you see it's an hexagon. I don't know if it. And you can make it a circle. Here you don't have a circle, but you can use the move C. But you can also put like a hundred points uh, and say uh, move around those points. And yeah, well, it will be more smooth. As you can see. Um, also, well, now that you have uh, this this code, you can make it a function, for example, just like a def a circular path, and put a, a, a post ref, let's say, and, and we can change this home. Yeah, for example, I mean, I'm just. Uh, uh -huh. 
and now you can if you want have another uh, for cycle and say for I uh, in range let's say let's make two <coughs> three three points you can make a like a new pose is equal to um, to the home pose for example but this pose I want to translate it uh, just uh, uh, as I did it here but I want to translate it in Y so it will move on this uh, uh, on this way so I'll put it zero I'll uh, move 50 both times um, Y and that the first time will be like uh, not moving and then it will be move I hope if I'm not wrong then now I, c I can call the uh oh yeah and um, I can call the circular path uh, sorry? Ah, sorry, yeah. You mean that? <laughs> I miss it out. Uh, and let's see. Okay, in bala, ah, yeah. Two mm -hmm. times. This one is okay? Well, let's see. So uh, it should. This is the first circle, and then the next one should should move to the left or to the right. I don't know. Wait, it, it move it make a second one, then a third one. So as you can see, it's just about playing with the poses. And you can also insert the script here. For example, we can. I like this one because afterwards you can use uh, different to, to make um, visual interfaces. And now you can make a program to say, I want to move the robot. You can use Ethernet to connect to the robot uh, and make more control. I, I feel it uh, very powerful. And, and if you use it inside the, the robot, the CAD, that is also, it's also Python, you can put it there. And, and the good thing that it will even show you the, the path that, that it, it will run. Well, I'm just put it, it saves. And well, you run it from here, and you can see the how, how the paths are, are, are drawn. And what pretty much is what we say, what what we do. And, um, here, well, we make a little bit more acrobatic things, but this is what we need. <laughs> but you can play, and it's free. I mean, it's, it's okay. So if you want to learn about robotics, uh, well, it's not that. <laughs> So if you have some questions, yeah, please. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> please wake up. Yeah. Like you explained, you have a robot and you have a gun attached to it. Yeah. How do you control a gun? Uh, well, just now uh, w we don't use Python for that because it's like um, it uses another kind of interface. So I've been thinking about using a Raspberry Pi to a PLC or something like that, but uh, well, that is uh, on ongoing research. <laughs> I think it was very fast. We'll do it. You mean the, the manufacturing process? Uh, that's very interesting. I mean, uh, the point that we're here, uh, uh, like we got it now, is not very accurate. I mean, we got like uh, one, two millimeters box. The idea I uh, was trying to put to attach uh, 3D scanners. So using machine learning just to get one measure, so do it the other way uh, until you get the accuracy that you want, like a calibration, and that is the main idea, but still precision development. Yeah, you, uh, we think that we can get a very good accuracy, but now it's like 1.5, two millimeters. Well, it depends on the material. <laughs> Well, all sorts of, uh, we, uh, titanium, aluminum, copper, uh, nickel super alloys, uh, cobalt alloys, uh, we are start working with ceramics. The thing that we, our research is, is on two sides. We work more on the material at first, uh, all that, the microstructure and all this, and then we try to make some something more interesting, so, yes. Uh, other questions? Yes, it, it works for uh, only for some materials. For example, materials that aluminum and this, uh, well, they don't have a very wide range. But for example, with nickel super alloys, 
uh, we can control uh, this hardness. Yes, we can do that. I mean, actually, the technology at the beginning is used uh, for surface modification, so you can have uh, a material, bulk material of, of some alloy, and, and on the top with the same material, but very, very, very hard. So it's for wear resistance and other applications. It's for that. Another question? Yes, I would like to ask you, you expressed the, ah. the position of the, the fan of the cooling and the simplest is three points uh, along the axis. And there was uh, another way to express the position. It was called the thermium. Well, quaternions, it's, uh, it's like a matrix, and they use it, uh, uh, ABB use it for, for quaternions, but what I want to say is that, for example, as Robodeca use, in this case, just Euler angles, uh, but you can, I mean, at the time that I would post-process for a motoman that use a more strange way of representing orientation, you don't care about that. You always think about the Euler angles, uh, and that's, I don't know if, uh, if I answer the question. Yes? Yes, uh, it has, uh, uh, I don't remember, I think it's in the robot, robot the car library, you can create robots as well. You just specify the joints. Uh, I think yes, I mean, um, I never, I mean, I work with industrial robots only, but uh, I saw in the, in the documentation that you can put uh, new joints and, well, build your own, like just like Ross. The bad thing is that um, ROS, you can make uh, asynchronous tasks, and here uh, I still don't know how to do it. Ah, if they can calculate the kinematics. Well, you need, uh, I, I, on that side, I'm pretty sure. If, 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 if it's uh, have a kinematic solder or something like that. Another question? Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs>